On the 29th of August 2021, an MQ-9 Reaper drone fired one of the last missiles in the United States' 20-year war in Afghanistan. The Pentagon believed that the target's car was packed with explosives and that he was planning an attack on Kabul's airport. But Zemurai Ahmadi, who was killed with nine members of his family, was in fact an aid worker with a US-based charity. Under the Obama administration, drones were sold to the public as the end of collateral damage and risky military assaults. Simply put, these strikes have saved lives. But in reality, U.S. drone strikes have killed hundreds of civilians in the past two decades. The actor that's using these technologies will not take the same care of planning as they might if they had skin in the game. The U.S. no longer has a monopoly on drone warfare. Now, cheap drones from China, Turkey and Israel are fueling global conflicts. The Chinese military hasn't used its drone in real warfare, but over the past decade, the country has exported over 200 drones to 16 countries. Over 100 countries have access to this technology. This is changing the nature of conflicts, from Ethiopia to Nagorno-Karabakh. Drones are even proving their effectiveness against some of the world's most advanced militaries. In February, following Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the Ukrainian Air Force utilized Turkish-made drones to offset some of Russia's enormous military advantage. The low barrier to entry means that drug cartels and terrorist groups have access to weaponized drones. And as warfare incorporates more AI, there's a fear of so-called slaughterbots that could identify and kill targets without human intervention. In 2021, the United Nations reported what may be the first use of a fully autonomous drone used in Libya's civil war. One of the biggest misconceptions of this issue, of this is a sci-fi problem or a problem of tomorrow, it is very much a problem of today. So as more countries and non-state actors get access to drones, how will they transform combat both on and off the battlefield? And as the rise of autonomous weapons continues, can we trust machines to kill? Use of unmanned aerial systems by the US military accelerated after the September the 11th terrorist attacks and the resulting war on terror. These wars were the type of conflicts where drones were particularly useful because if you want to follow individuals for a long time, if you want to surveil and monitor the ground, drones are great for that. Drones were sold as a way to target terrorist leaders without putting soldiers' lives at risk. Technologically speaking, drones can be extremely precise. They can gather a lot of intelligence um, about their, their targets before striking. But if you compare that to, for example, the way that air power was used in World War II, where whole cities were destroyed in Europe and Asia with carpet bombing of cities, there's been a huge change in the ability of precision weapons to have much more targeted uses of force but they are only as targeted as the intelligence given to its pilots. Just like with the Afghanistan strike on Zemarai Ahmadi, this can have tragic consequences. There was no question that the drone struck precisely this individual, but it was precisely the wrong individual. So the question wasn't about the precision, it was a question of the intelligence, and the intelligence is faulty. Faulty intelligence can then lead to confirmation bias. What the Pentagon thought were explosives may have been water canisters. You see this individual doing things that seem to comport with what you would expect of terrorist activity. And so everything gets filtered through that lens of, oh, this is the terrorist, this is the person we're looking for. In the past two decades, there has been an estimated 14,000 U.S. drone strikes in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Yemen, and Somalia, leaving up to 1,750 civilians killed. I no longer love blue skies. In fact, I now prefer gray skies. The drones do not fly when the skies are gray. Reports have shown that U.S. airstrikes and drone strikes undercount civilian casualties. These deaths can lead to an increase in anti-U.S. sentiment. When civilians are killed, terrorist leaders can then use that as a recruitment tool 
to try to bring in more militants into its fold. Some say that without the risk to soldiers' lives, decisions are taken with less care. There's no pilot at risk, there's no special operations force uh, at risk, and therefore the moral hazard is that it causes the country to take more sort of riskier behaviors with respect to the other side. And so that can translate into more civilian casualties. If that were to happen in, in Madrid or Paris or Berlin, it would be on the front pages of every newspaper. And unfortunately, that's not been the case because people are able to just shrug away Afghan civilian lives being lost. And that's the story of 20 years of occupation and drone strikes in Afghanistan, unfortunately. While the US developed drone technology, recent wars point to its utility, not just in counterterrorism efforts, but increasingly in battlefields around the globe. Oil-rich Azerbaijan purchases sophisticated military technology including drones, from Israel and Turkey. In 2020, a war between Azerbaijan and Armenia over the Nagorno-Karabakh region showed how drones can turn the tide in a conventional conflict. Azerbaijan had access to drones that allowed them to put up persistent air coverage, looking for Armenian forces on the ground, and then target them with drone strikes. Nagorno-Karabakh may be a window into the future of modern warfare. Machine guns made trench warfare extremely lethal, and militaries had years of bloody trench warfare to change their tactics. Drones are, over the next several decades, likely to change ground warfare in a way that is equally as profound. Drones have played an outsized role in Ethiopia, Libya, and Syria, where Turkish drones are a routine tool against Kurdish rebels. China, Turkey, and Israel are the main exporters of these cheap militarized drones. The market is expected to reach $32 billion by 2025. China's entrance into the drone market transformed the drone proliferation landscape, and it's only accelerated since then with the entrance of Turkey into the market. These exports have effectively lowered the barriers to entry of controlling your own military fleet. You don't need to have an F-16 aircraft to be able to have air power. And that has had an equalizing effect on warfare in many ways, with less capable groups and countries getting access to air power and using it in conflicts. As drones proliferate, there's a fear that they may lead to longer conflicts and higher civilian casualties. I think these drones will make it all too easy for these wars to continue at a level of low intensity because there's less cost that's borne by using that, that technology. Non-state actors such as drug cartels and even terrorist groups are increasingly using armed drones. New propaganda videos from ISIS appear to show armed drones dropping explosives on Iraqi troops with dead center accuracy. And it's not going to have the same sort of range and, and payload as an American Reaper, but it's enough to be quite disruptive. Drones are even being used in assassination attempts on politicians. They thought it was fireworks first, but it was a drone bomb, a brazen assassination attempt against Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro. The widespread availability of drones and the ability to arm them with relatively crude homemade weapons suggests that over time this will be an increasing threat. The invention of gunpowder and nuclear weapons revolutionized warfare. Autonomous weapons are maybe the next revolution, and drones will play a key role. They can fly high above the battlefield, swooping in and hitting targets they identify on their own or at the command of a human. Over time, as we see more artificial intelligence incorporated into drones, they'll be able to take on more autonomous capabilities. This isn't just the realm of science fiction. In possibly the first case of its kind, the United Nations stated that in 2020, Libya's interim government used a lethal autonomous drone attack against rival Haftar armed forces. The Kargu 2 quadcopter drones may have located and attacked independently of any kind of human control. So in that decision of killing a target, of identifying that target, selecting that target, and engaging that target, that decision is now made by an algorithm and not by a person. Lots of militaries around the world are going to have interest in using drones and using robotics because as the technology advances, it will become a potentially more effective way to use force. And many are worried. 
What happens when a Predator drone has as much autonomy as a self-driving car? Are we comfortable delegating life and death decisions on the battlefield to machines? Not everyone agrees on how autonomous the drones used in Libya are, but what is certain is that more autonomy will increase the speed in which wars are fought. The temporal dimension, this fleeting superiority that you may be facing where decisions will be made that fast, it might be algorithm against algorithm. The introduction of greater automation and artificial intelligence into warfare could accelerate the pace of warfare over time. This could be potentially very dangerous because it could mean that warfare is fought in ways that are beyond human control. The US is pouring billions into the development of autonomous weapon systems, which are also known as slaughter bots. You can go out there and program these types of weapons to target a specific person based on gender, based on perceived age, based on perceived race. So this introduces a whole host of problems outside of the military context. You have a host of problems that you need to address from the danger of an arms race between uh, different actors to unintended military confrontations, unintended wars. The future of automated military equipment is still undecided. In December, UN talks failed to agree to a ban on autonomous weapons. We're at a pivotal moment in our thinking through what our future, humanity's future, will look like with or without autonomous weapon systems. And I think the international governance conversation is at the heart of this. The convention has restricted some of the world's cruelest tools of warfare, including landmines and incendiary weapons. The way that autocratic countries might leverage autonomy and robotics to violate human rights and repress their people is actually a pretty big deal and one that, that we should be thinking about. However drones and autonomous weapons are used, they will play a key role in the wars of the future. If no one felt responsible for killing in war, how might that change war? Would force be used more leniently in warfare? And what would that say about us as a society if no one felt responsible for the consequences of war?